Here's how you can learn to use the Arduino without even having an Arduino. And I'm going to show you how to do that using this wonderful software called Tinkercad Circuits. I'm going to assume that you know what the Arduino is. If not, you can go to arduino.cc, which is their home page, and you can learn all about it. But assuming you know what it is, here is how you can get started with it using Tinkercad Circuits. I'm going to start with the very basics here and show you how to make this blinking LED circuit. So let's get rid of this first of all. And the way that you can go to the uh, easily to the Arduino stuff is click on this box up here and then choose Arduino. And then you've got all sorts of things you can do with the Arduino. Let's first of all drag that one out here and then we can take a look at what's happening. We can just run it. If we just do the start simulation, you can see the USB cable from an imaginary computer plugs in to give it power. And then it's got a program on it already running called the Blink program. And it's got an internal LED, which even will run without these two things. Let me stop the simulation and I am going to delete these two items and run the simulation again and the onboard LED blinks and that's connected to pin 13 so the two work together so you can see they they blink together so let's see about the most basic program that you can run here on the Arduino and you can get all of these like this blink is run by a program let's look at that program is also called code if we click on that, we get a window that allows us to take a look at the code for the program that's currently running. Now this kind of programming is called blocks, and it allows you to program things. You can drag these blocks into your actual programming environment here. So you can do things that we'll talk about in a minute. Here is the actual text. Here is kind of the official way of programming. So we'll look at both of these as we go along. Let's get rid of the text. Let's just look at blocks and let's take a look at what's going on here. So it's just two lines of comments, basically. And then it tells the Arduino to set the built-in LED to high. So that means light this baby up. And then it says, wait for one second. And then another comment and comments are what programmers put in the code to remind themselves of what they're doing or also to clue in programmers who follow them so that they can understand what's going on. They can probably understand what's going on, but understand what was on the original programmer's mind. So anyhow, this is another comment, turn the lid off by making the voltage low. So we're going to set the built-in LED to low, which is basically zero volts, where high is five volts. And then once we've set it to low, or once we've turned it off, then we're going to wait one second. And this is called a loop. And it's just going to go back to the beginning and loop through it again forever. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's close the blocks by clicking on the code button and start the simulation. So our code said, set the LED high, wait one second, then set it low then wait one second. So turn it on and turn it off. Turn it on and turn it off. Okay, nothing to it, right? Let's put those two components in and take it a step further. One thing that you can do is you can add them yourself, or the easiest way is just to get rid of this. And I hold down the shift key and then drag a rectangular around everything and then hit delete on my keyboard. It says you're going to lose the code as well as the object. Fine, go ahead, go ahead. And then let's just drag this one out that's got the LED and the resistor connected to the board. So now if we run this simulation, we can see that we apply power and we've got the internal LED blinking and we've got the external LED blinking. And then if we take a look at the code, well, it's gonna be the same thing. And if we look at the text, we can see what's happening. So we had the title block comment, this program blinks pin 13. Here it is here, this program blinks pin 13. And then down here, it says set the built-in LED to high. It does this piece automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. So this is the first indication of how using blocks is easier than using the text. And also, we don't have to do this loop business. And then here's the next comment, turn the LED on high. And then digital write 13 high. So that's, that's the actual programming that the Arduino needs to turn the LED high. And so if you want to learn this stuff, it's really to your advantage to learn it if you're going to get any bit serious about working with the Arduino, but you don't have to learn it straight away.
So here's the more complex stuff, and here's the easy stuff. Let's take a look at how we can actually build this ourselves. So I'm going to close the code window, and then what I'm going to do is start with a raw Arduino. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, draw a rectangle around all this stuff, hit delete. And now what we can do is we can bring out a, a blank Arduino and we can build that stuff ourselves. So I'm going to pull this one out. And this has got a breadboard connected to it. We'll get into breadboards later, but for now I'm just going to get rid of it. If I click on that and run the simulation, I didn't have to click on it first. But it's got the basic Blink program already installed, but it's got less garbage along with it. And I'll show you that if we open up the code, we can see we don't have as much. We don't have the commenting and some of the extra stuff. But let's just get rid of this and do it ourselves. So I'm going to stop the simulation and I'm going to get rid of this stuff. I'm just going to drag it off to the left or I can drag it down to the trash can. So let's build the program ourselves. Let's go back. First of all, let's close this and let's run the simulation and see if anything happens. It did apply power. And we've got a little on indicator here showing us that we've got power applied to the board but no more blinking LED. So let's fix that, what do you say? Stop the simulation, open the code window, and what we want to do is set the built-in LED to high. We want to wait one second. So I have to click on the control choice here and wait one second. I'm gonna click and hold and drag that out here and they just kind of plug into each other like a jigsaw puzzle. And then I'm gonna set the built-in LED to low Go back to output, and then I'm going to drag this piece out here, but it's set to high. I'm going to change that to low, and then I'm going to wait one second. I can just copy this. I can just duplicate this. I can right click and choose duplicate, and put it down here, and cl left click and let go. And I'm going to get rid of this last one. I don't need it. So we're going to set the LED high, turn it on. We're going to wait one second. So we're going to set it to low, and that is the same as turning it off or zero volts. Then we're going to wait one second, and we're just going to start again. If we don't tell it to stop, it'll just keep running. So let's try it. Let's close the code window, start simulation. And look at that. We've got a blinking internal LED. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> It, you know, it is. It, I got excited the first time I did that. That's pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's put the external LED and resistor on. So let's stop the simulation. And now we're going to go get an LED. So you can go up here to the box that now says Starters Arduino, and you can choose basic components. And then you can drag out the LED, and you can drag out the resistor. Now let's go see what they had just for kicks. Let's move this out of the way. And let's go back to Arduino and let's pull this one out and see what they had going on here. If you know resistor color codes, that's also a good thing to learn, or at least you can get a color code sheet. But in Tinkercad circuits, uh, just one of the things that I love about it, all you have to do is click on these components and you can see that that resistor is a 220 ohm resistor. So that's what they use, that's what we'll use. So I am going to get rid of this. I'm just going to hit control Z. It's a lot easier than highlighting all that stuff and trying to delete it. And then I'm going to pull this back down and 220 ohms. If I click on this one, this one's a 1000 ohm, 1k ohm. So we're going to change that to ohms and make it 220. And then we're going to plug that into pin 13 or ground. It doesn't matter. But if you want to use you know, this stuff is reference. You, again, you can pull this out. You can leave it out. It doesn't matter. But they had the resistor going to pin 13 and then the cathode of the LED going to ground. So we can do the same thing. Let's put the resistor to pin 13 and connect the anode. We can click on that to make sure that it's the anode. LEDs do have polarity, so it does matter which leg you connect to what. Resistors do not have polarity. That does not matter. And then we'll click on the cathode and pull a wire down to ground. And because these 
two LEDs are really connected together. The external one on pin 13 and the internal one, they're both connected together. There is no more programming required for this one. So we can start our simulation. And look at that. We've got an internal blinking LED and we've got an external blinking LED. Let's go take a look at that code again. Now we, we did the blocks. Whoops, let's stop the simulation. Get rid of the code window. Get rid of this one. Hold on my shift key, draw a rectangle around all that stuff. Delete, okay. Let's go run that now. Make sure it still works. Yes, let's look at the code. And here's my simplified version without all the extra stuff in it. And let's take a look at the text code as well. Can't show it without stopping the simulation. Now I'm going to show blocks and text. And actually what I'm going to do is move that, move this over so we can see it while those two windows open up. So in our blocks, which is so easy to use for programming in Arduino, we set the built-in LED to high. We didn't have to say anything about the external because it's connected to that magic pin 13. And over here in the text, we had to say, digital write 13 comma high and then delay 1000 1000 milliseconds is one second it tells you that here 1000 milliseconds you're going to have to do some studying if you want to understand the text version of programming in order to find out what a loop is and what a setup is and what milliseconds are you know you're going to have to spend some time learning that but the magic of code blocks is you don't have to learn any of that stuff so you can start playing around right away and that's just magic to me the first time I was exposed to code blocks was about, I don't know, two years ago or so. It's what, uh, it's 2020 now. I thought it was just kid stuff. I thought it was a joke, but it has really mushroomed and it is. It did start for kids, I believe, but it's a wonderful tool for us grown up too. <laughs> so there's a text you can learn. Oh, I wanted to say that this is a great learning tool. You can use the code blocks to do it really simple. And then you can come over here and you can check the text to find out how to program the equivalent of these code blocks. For instance, if we get rid of these, the first thing we did was we set the built-in LED to high, and we can see that it inserted this line digital write 13 high. So that's computer mumbo jumbo saying, go to pin 13 and set it high, where we were able to say it much easier here. And just so happens that pin 13 is connected to the built-in LED. So this is a little bit different than if we did it on a different pin, which we certainly could. But I'm trying to make the point that we can learn programming by playing with these blocks. So then the next point was to let it stay lit for a second. So we go to control and we say, wait one second. So then you can watch the text build as we move forward. So that wait one second is delay 1,000, and there are 1,000 milliseconds in a second, and that's, again, computer stuff that has to be there. And then we can say, okay, I want to set the built-in LED to low, so I'll go back to output, and let's drag out this block, and let's change it. Right now, it's setting it to high. Let's change it to low, and we can see what it did over here. So it's a great learning tool, not only because it makes it very simple for you to program your Arduino, but also because you can use the blocks to learn how to code the real way. And for the longest time, you don't need the real coding because the blocks will do it for you. But if you want to do certain things, the blocks will not do those certain things. So you will have to either copy and paste code that you get elsewhere, or you'll have to learn how to code yourself. Okay. There we have our first very basic introduction to playing around with the Arduino without even needing to own an Arduino. Boy, you can't beat that.